Hello, hello. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I do apologize for the long delay up on, on this one. Um, this is the as promised uh, shutter control system I was working on. Uh, as you can see here, I've already mounted in the front standard for my 8x10 the electromagnetic sh uh, electromechanical shutter. Um, it's actually functioned here by the solenoid. And when it pulls back on this, opens up that shutter for you real good. And then when it's fully open, it does actuate the switch here, which makes an excellent flash sync. Um, now this is actually in this part, the power box, this top tray, which I've set up for or 18650s um, is replaceable so you can use different uh, power supplies with it but inside here we have a uh, buck converter to power the Raspberry Pi Pico which is the brains of the operation in this part buried down beneath all those wires. And here is the MOSFET, which takes the input voltage for the shutter and turns it on and off from a, by a signal from the Pi Pico. Um, and we'll go into, I will go into a little bit more detail on wiring and how that's connected i'll also go over the code briefly um the stl files for the uh, battery sled the power box and the control box here uh, are going to be on the github along with the um along with the uh code uh, for the for the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico and a list of materials needed for the Pi Pico. Now I do have this control box open. Um, I would normally secure the top with hot glue. Um, that's only because I'm not so good at doing the snap clasps on 3D print stuff. Uh, so real quick, give a operational demonstration. Now I have not yet put a power switch, so kind of a crude of just plugging it in. But with this style connector that I'm using, I could substitute in. Um, Lithium polymer cells, similar to what you get for like RC vehicles. Uh, it can be, like I said, this top sled can be swapped out for like a tool battery adapter. You could use an AC wall adapter if it was being used in studio situations. Um, or if you really want to go truly authentic in appearance and get a couple motorcycle batteries and power them up. One thing I do want to make clear, absolutely clear, I mentioned it on the in the documentation on the GitHub, but this system will only operate the DC powered, a direct current uh, battery powered um, shutters like this. Uh, I know Packard shutters have a 12 volt, 24 volt, and a 120 volt AC version of this type of shutter um the ac version is not as common but there were uh multiple there was a line of cameras uh specifically from bd that used uh the ac packard shutter uh, this particular one I actually found on this particular shutter is not a Packard shutter. 
I found it on eBay being sold as a German electric shutter for wood large format cameras. Uh, last I looked, they're still available there for about $30 United, uh, USD. USD. Um, but even though they say so they have over 10, there's no telling if it's 10 or if they just haven't updated their stock level yet. Um, but I've plugged in the batteries, and as you can see, it is on. Uh, let's see if I can get that text to focus. And no. Bring it up a little closer, and then it just focuses. Okay, so here you can see it says shutter speed and focus. This is just a focus setting. And then it's a little washed out because it's an OLED display. And my camera isn't really designed for video, but it actually says on there shutter open. And then shutter closed with a brief pause before going back to focus and you can set it to 1 60th 1 30th 1 15th 8th quarter half one and from there it's one second increments all the way up to 30 seconds um really the only delay in how long that goes is how patient you want to be with the code um and honestly something like this you could easily do a menu and and uh dial in the speed that way personally i'm not that good of a coder i'm not i'm not going to try to claim i'm any better than i am so this is Pretty much what I could cobble together from it. But here at 130th, opens and closed, and it has a flag shutter fired. Just in case you missed the click, you can go to 115th, 18th, 14th, half one second one sixtieth is the fastest it can go and because my camera can only go to 30 frames per second you don't always see it yeah 30 seconds and it'll sit there and stay open for 30 seconds And again, because of the way it's linked to the uh, switch here, um, you can use it with a flash sync. Um, the way I have that set up is with a yeah. Cables are a little caught up here. a hot shoe adapter now this particular one which is linked in the um parts list in the github can take the pc port a standard hot shoe flash or uh transmitter and then also has the um audio jack style uh, sync port. Now all three, the simple hot shoe, PC port, even the audio jack style, they all work the same way in that the shut, uh, flash is triggered by shorting those two 
terminals out. Um, so ultimately, that's all that really has to happen, and it'll fire the flash. So once it fully opens, it triggers the switch, and then it triggers that switch, and it triggers the flash. If you're using a transmitter connected to the hot shoe adapter, um, then it'll trigger any flash connected to the receiver. Uh, and because of it, is, it is a contact switch. This is actually rated um, because I did pull it off to make sure it was clean and everything was connected properly. Uh, this one's actually rated to 250 volts. So even like my vintage uh, studio strobes, which have a 70 volt trigger voltage, no problem with this. Um, some of your vintage flash units, electronic flashes, are 150, 200 volts. Um, not many go over that 200 volt point, but just something to be aware of. Uh, that's why some of those flashes cannot be used with modern cameras, because modern cameras use a simple MOSFET and would be burned out by that. So one thing that I am going to do with this that I want to improve is, as it stands, it's just this plug is the switch. I am going to put a switch in here so I can just turn it off here. I can just turn it off here instead of unplugging it every time. But now that you've seen... Sorry about that. Now that you've seen it generally in operation, uh, no, I think the camera took a snapshot. <laughs> but the sled here is 3D printed. And again, the STL is included with in the uh, GitHub repository, but you do need to add the terminals. And then because of the voltage on the 18650s, um, they're put in negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive across um, either side on the sled. And then you can see they're wi the batteries are actually wired in series with the positive and negative being for the pack being taken from either end of the chain um, and fed into the uh, connector here. And then that goes into the power box. Give me just one moment. the shutter out of the way. Okay. So to connect the different modules, I actually use these automotive connectors. Um, you take the wire, they go through a silicone grommet. Uh, you crimp the pins onto them and then they snap into place put the ceiling the ceiling sleeve here and the end bit here snaps in holding those pins in place inside and keeping them from pulling out um, again i did link these in with the uh parts list um, Really, any compatible connector will work. Uh, these are just the ones that 
I selected because they were the most reasonably priced ones I could find at the time that had the four connectors and the both the male and female sides uh, in one kit with the pins. But the wiring is very simple. In this, you can see this gray wire goes to the flash terminals. And then the other wire here, which is a speaker wire, goes into the solenoid terminals for the shutter. Going into the box here, let's get this focused. And let's bring you in, get you a better look at this. Okay. Speaker wire actually comes in and secures in the output of this MOSFET board. Now, this is a board you'd commonly get with. Um, like Arduino kits, um, you can buy them on their own. I did link to some, again, with the parts list of the GitHub. Uh, and you have the full voltage coming in from the battery, which is wired over here parallel to the uh, uh, buck converter. And then you have a ground and signal, which goes back to the control box from the uh, Pi Pico. And then when the uh, receives a signal here, turns on the MOSFET, puts power to the solenoid. Uh, one thing you cannot see here, it's on the underside of the board. I did put a one end. 4004 uh, silicone diode as a clamping diode. So I put it in uh, in reverse polarity across the terminals so that um, the back voltage from the solenoid turning off doesn't blow out the, the MOSFET. Um, depending on how quickly it's switching, uh, that back voltage can be hundreds of volts, which will blow out most um, MOSFETs. But also in here, like I said, in parallel is the buck converter, which this one is an adjustable um, buck converter. I do believe this may actually be a buck boost converter, but it is one I had on hand. Um, and it shares the power lead to the batteries and then takes this higher voltage and steps that down to the um, voltage needed by the Pi Pico, which I have this bringing it down to 4.5 volts, which, and you have another one of the connectors here, which comes in here and is actually connected to the um, bus power connector and then one of the grounds. And then we have the rotary encoder and the OLED screen and the case here, as well as the screen bracket and the knob for the rotary encoder. Uh, those STLs are also on the GitHub. Um, so if you have a 3D printer, you can easily print them out. Uh, there are print services you can send them off to for getting them printed out. Uh, personally, I have a printer, so I just print my own stuff. Let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and go over here. And this is the wiring diagram. Now again, the the uh, 
This is a very crude block, uh, block diagram. You can see the 24 volts coming into the buck converter, and that also goes over to the MOSFET. And then you get the five volts coming down to the Pi Pico. And coming into the uh, VSYS and the ground, you can use any of the grounds available on the Pi Pico. Um, and then from there, the 3.3 volts out goes over to the rotary encoder as well as the OLED display. Um, and then GPI pin 0 and 1 are for the I squared C. Those go over to your OLED and the rotary encoder. Um, as you can see here, connects to GPI 13, 14, and 15 with the switch connector, which on this particular encoder here, uh, which is the same as what I have, the switch is the center pin is over here on GPIO 15 and GPIO 14 and 13 are marked here as data and clock. Uh, those are less critical to get in the right order because that can be adjusted in code. But then uh, GPIO 16 is the one that feeds up to the MOSFET to trigger the shutter solenoid and here i also drew in the 1n4004 um, again reverse bias so that when the shutter is turned off at the mosfet there will be a voltage spike coming out of that shutter and that diode just keeps it from getting too high the mosfet gets destroyed So now this here is the code for the for the shutter. Um, and you can see here this is setting up the inputs for the rotary encoder. So you have for the IRQ, that's the interrupt, um, clock and data. And if the uh, rotation is the wrong direction, you can always reverse these two or even reverse, set this to false. That'll cause the rotation to uh, work the other way. Because uh, the way I currently have it set is clockwise increases the uh, the the time the shutter's open, counterclockwise reduces it, um, and then this here is just a flag for the IRQ function, range mode, rotary RQ, range wrap. Just means that once you hit the max value here, it'll go back to the minimum, or if you go down below the minimum, it goes back to the maximum. So you can't go to zero or any negative number, and you can't go past 37 in this code. And then this is going to get a value um, by counting from one to 37 and back and forth in that range, saves it to value old, and then sets the display update and this is just setting up the situation, the, the, the controller. And then here's the infinite loop, the while true value new equals R value, indicator LED LED value zero. And that's the onboard LED for the Pi Pico. Um, and then here, checking the old value to the new value. 
Um, as you can see, I added uh, comments here, accumulating a rotary encoder steps. So it's just counting. It's again, counting between one and the maximum value and then back depending on how you turn it. Um, it then sets the old value to the new value. Now this is a debug on the shell terminal. So if you have the Pi plugged in to Thonny, which is what I use, um, you can see in the shell at the bottom of the screen, um, while the script is running, the it'll show the, the number, the value new number here. Uh, and then it sets the update display to one, um, indicating that it needs to update the display to the new uh, value. And then if the switch value, um, if, if the switch is set to, if you push the, the center button on the rotary encoder, triggering that fire, um, as, it, as it shows here, firing shutter when trigger button pressed, um, it indicates to fire the shutter with the value indicated. Outputs to the shell terminal button pressed. Um, sets end to one. And then while switch value um, continues zero, it just loops and then it sets end to zero. So the end here is used as a, as a uh, um, safety so that you can't just keep rapid clicking the button and forcing it to fire the shutter repeatedly, never actually letting it close. Um, and then here's the update routine for the display. So you can update this at first, resets the flag, um, sets the text for the new value, which is the which is where it gets the um, information from the um, speed selector script, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, Clears the display, sets the rotation, because uh, the default rotation is 180 degrees out from what I have on mine. Um, and if you install the screen in the opposite direction, it's going to be different. If you want to use it in a vertical pot, uh, vertical situation, uh, vertical orientation, you would set that to one or three. Um, and then here it's setting the text on the screen and, and displaying it to the screen. And we have a uh, five millisecond to debounce the, uh, the switch. Um, I did have an issue with not so much the switch, but the rotary encoder. Um, so I did have an issue at first getting it to only move one um, one speed per per click on the sh on the rotary encoder, but this long block here is where it selects the specific speed. So here I is commented uh, setting display time for shutter and setting shutter open delay. Um, indicating speeds going from 1 60th to 30 seconds plus focus. So here it's delay selects is the way it's using it here, but that is the new value. And then it sets up the texture, uh, the text value and the shutter speed. So then here, uh, delay selects, which is a special case, 
being one, sets the text value to focus. Uh, delay select two. Again, this these numbers are just from that counting on the rotary encoder. Um, make sure that it closes the um, the shutter should you move away from from the focus position without closing the shutter. Uh, automatically closes the shutter to make sure that you're not leaving that open. Uh, and then sets the shutter speed, sets the text. And the close value here is more of a artifact from moving from focus. But as you can see, it's setting the shutter speed in milliseconds. Or sorry, and it's milliseconds represented as fractions of a second, decimal fractions of a second. So it's setting the seconds delay and then all the way down to the 30 seconds. And again, this can be expanded, adding more of these, um, more of these LF terms, uh, and then adjusting the min max here, uh, specifically the maximum to allow for those additional selections. And the up here is the actual fire uh, sequence. Uh, and here, like I said, the the uh, special case is taking the uh, focus. You know, if it's already open, it closes it, turns off the LED, um, puts on the screen shutter closed. And then updates, you know, sets the update display to say we need to update the display. Otherwise, open the, uh, turn on the LED. Again, that's the onboard LED for the Pi Pico. Uh, open the shutter. Um, put on this onto the display. Uh, the shutter open. Uh, if it's not the special case. Then it triggers the LED, opens the shutter, waits for the amount of time from the delay here, closes the, closes the shutter, turns off the LED, and then adds the flag shutter fired. And this is actually called from the the uh, forever loop down here, the while true. And then above this is indicating the include modules being needed, which the rotary IRQ is included with the uh, code base. Uh, machine is automatically as part of is already part of um, the circuit Python as is time. Uh, the SSD 1306 is for the OLED display. Uh, that's also included in the code. And then there is one other module included. Go ahead and bring that up. And that's the rotary right here. And that one is an MIT license, but it is necessary for setting up the IRQs on the second uh, core of the Pico to offload some of that. 
Um, you don't need to worry about any of that code, but it does. It is needed by the rotary IRQ module. So with the two of those, with the SSD 1306, uh, that is in the modules folder. Uh, this specifically is the main Pi, but in the other one there is shutter one underscore five, which is the same as the main, except it is uh, re removing the one sixtieth of a second. But other than that is the exact same code. Let's go ahead and bring this back out a little too much. I'll go ahead and on a uh, closing note, I do know last time I'd mentioned this, I had received questions on if I would if I was intending to sell these. Um, at that point, I had no interest in selling them. Honestly, it was something I was doing for my eight by 10 project. Um, I had come into, pos into possession mostly because I saw it and thought it was a really cool thing for the shutter module, you know, the shutter that you can see in here, which, is a really nice system because I mean it's a solenoid it's got the flash switch run it from a microcontroller you don't have to worry about is the delay train getting go, uh, gummed up with old oil is dust going to get in it and destroy some gear or are the 60 year old electronics going to suddenly die is it going to have a capacitor inside blow out on it um you know all these things that plague the older vintage cameras that are fun to shoot they're great cameras but there's there's always a worrying concern especially as time goes on parts are becoming less and less available and i know me saying that some will say it's hypocritical because of i have cameras that are 70 80 years old i have cameras that are 150 years old um But I use them, I maintain them. But back to what I was getting at, um, if there's interest, I could definitely see myself you know, selling uh, these shutter setups. Um, I'd have to look a little more into the overall cost on that, see what the price point would be. But that's definitely something that I could look into. Um, and if there is enough interest and enough people willing to do a pre-purchase it would even be possible for me to talk to one of the local machine shops 
and even do a quote on getting some parts to make uh, new shutters like this made. Because really the hardest part with a shutter like this isn't the electronics. It's not the solenoid. It's not the micro switch. I mean, these micro switches, you can get them all over the place, especially with the popularity of 3D printing and with the resurgence of the DIY build your own. You know, this is similar uh, tactical switch is what you get for your Z end stop for your end stops on a 3D printer. So micro switches like this are all over the place. But getting like the shutter blades manufactured and the internal mechanism, which isn't complicated. It's it's a fairly simple system, but yeah, if there's enough interest, I could definitely look into getting them even manufactured new to uh, increase that volume. Because like I said, you can get ones just like this one uh, off eBay for about 30 US dollars. Um, And then uh, you can sometimes get the electric Packards, which are a similar setup. It's just a Packard shutter instead of a leaf shutter. Um, so, yeah, definitely something I'd be willing to look into if there's enough interest. Um, if it's just one or two people, honestly, that's not going to be really enough to justify that kind of investment of time and effort. Um, but let me know in the comments, um, find me over on Instagram and then, yeah, I'll include the link to the GitHub, uh, in the description as well as a um, link to my Instagram. And thank you for watching if you made it this long. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.